All right, so I've picked this one out of the two I made, and I'm gonna just spend some time going through the lighting tools and lighting this up. And what I'm gonna first do is I'm actually gonna delete the directional light and the skylight. So all we have in the scene now is the exponential height fog, which you'll see is kind of an alpha channel, right? Uh, and which, you know, I, I've done this a few times, so I knew that it would be sweet to just kind of set up this super long colonnade to position this still life in. So I just took some time to really quickly mask that out with the cylinders out through there. But that's a kind of extra flare, not, not necessary, but you know, you could be creative with your background for the scene. What you can kind of see though, is it's, it's really subtly showcasing the edges of the geometry, but this will become uh, much more obvious what's on the table once we just start populating it with some lights. And for the still life composition, I recommend just using uh, spotlights and potentially point lights or rectangle lights. But I'm just gonna drag a spotlight into the scene and we'll go through some of its info. So this is where the details panel starts to really come in handy. Uh, as I've just dropped this in, you'll notice it has this big triangle, that's or this big pyramid cone that is uh, visible around it. And that is the area of influence. And uh, you can see as I drag and move it in the scene, the shadows are updating. But you'll also notice this little preview word. And so uh, we'll go through all of these different elements here for just a moment. First up is talking about baked lighting versus dynamic lighting. And uh, the reason this says preview is because it's set to a baked lighting scenario, but we haven't baked the lighting. And what that means is to save on computing power while you're playing the game, they, in the engine, have baked the shadow information onto the textures and the materials temporarily. If we were to think of the material file for this cube, which is just a flat white color, in this portion of its texture mapping, it has, uh, it's going to temporarily map a shadow onto that area, uh, which is pretty useful and it can save you a lot of processing power in, and performance power. And so, in general, if you want your scene to be the most performative, you know, easiest on your computer and easiest on uh, your target hardware, you want to use static lighting. And this is going to be an option available in any of the lights you pick. It'll be hidden here under the transform controls. So if you make your lighting static, it will be the cheapest for your computer to run. The trade-off, though, is that this isn't what it's really going to look like. And uh, we'll get into that a bit in a moment. Uh, but just know that static is the cheapest. Stationary is a hybrid. Uh, it gives you a few more options and can be volumetric, which is really interesting for us. And then movable is the most expensive on the computer, but what you see is what you get. Um, it's not going to pull any punches. This is going to be the lighting scenario. Um, while I'm first setting this up, I'm going to show you the movable case just because it is quicker to a demo, but I will go through the process of baking the lighting uh, in just a moment as well. So we're taking a look at the spotlight. I have it set to movable and uh, you'll notice you have a few immediately controls that are probably pretty obvious what they do. So intensity, if you just slide this bar down, it will dim the light down to zero, slide it up, boom, it gets super bright. The default was eight. Uh, let's let's put it to like one. That seems like a good place to start. The attenuation radius is the the length of this cone. So if I shrink that down, you'll see that the zone of influence on the light has decreased dramatically. Uh, it was default at a thousand. We'll bring it down to. It doesn't really matter for now. Four hundred seems fine because we can just move it around as we desire. You have a few other controls here. So the outer radius uh, is the main outside radius of the pyramid, or sorry, the cone. And the inner is a smaller, more focused area lighting. And if you bring this all the way out to the edge of the other, um, 
it becomes very harsh um, if you have it down to zero as it is a default it's a very soft cone very soft set of lighting which I recommend uh, just kind of leaving that off for now another really interesting factor here is the source radius though so to get a more clear example of this, I'm gonna move the light over we're gonna make some really dramatic shadows I'm just gonna move it down I'm just gonna use the rotate to rotate this into place just to make some nice long shadows on these geometries and to make it very obvious what's happening. So uh, if, I, if I change the source radius, you'll notice that there's this circle that appears around the spotlight that is growing. And as it grows, the, the shadowing softens. And this is how you diffuse the shadows. If you have it all the way down to zero, the shadows will be very harsh and straight edged. But the, the wider the radius, the more diffuse the lighting will be. This becomes much more pronounced when you bake the lighting as well. So just keep that in mind. And there's this other source soft radius, but the effects of this one won't be as dramatic on these spotlights. So you probably don't need to worry too much about that. Another really interesting and useful feature here, uh, of course, other than the light color, which I skipped over, but um, I'll show you maybe the light color first, as you know, of course, you can just pick a color for the light, which can be a lot of fun. You can make some really psychedelic stuff. Uh, to reset any of these values in Unreal, you can just click this little yellow arrow, and it actually will just reset it to its default, uh, which is pretty handy. So, you know, you can go crazy, try out like, you know, some teal, blue, and then reset it. I find though, if you're going for really realistic lighting setups, it'll be better almost exclusively to use the use temperature checkbox. So I'm going to check it. And then if I pull it down, it will warm the scene. And if I bring it up, it will cool the scene. And this temperature range is a modeled after realistic lighting. So if you do this temperature range rather than the color, it will look like realistic lighting fixtures. So if you want it to be like a little warmer, you know, it's almost like a golden sunrise uh, lighting temperature. And so that's pretty interesting. There are another a couple other checkboxes here. Uh, effects world, yes, we want it to. If we uncheck it, you'll hide it. Cast shadows, if you don't uncheck it, it will not cast shadows. You'll notice that the shadows are a little bit messy, but we will clean that up uh, in a later step. The, these two options are also quite interesting. Um, these won't be as dramatic here in this smaller scene, but the volumetric will be interesting for us. And this will come in right now, actually, as I'm going to find my fog, my exponential height fog actor, and just select it. And this is where it starts to get magical. So, uh, you know, if I turn off the fog, this is what the scene looks like. Uh, and it, as of now, the fog is just serving to showcase a little bit of the depth of the scene. If I turn it on, you can kind of see how it updates. You can just see like into the background. It also bumps up the brightness here a bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in the exponential height fog, in its details panel, I'm going to check this box for volumetric fog, which you'll notice has immediately hidden the background. Um, what I can do, though, is I can crank the density of the fog quite a bit. And uh, what, what it means by volumetric is that it's going to actually catch in the lights. So uh, I want this to be a pretty high number just to demo it. But what you'll notice if I try to slide the bar here, it doesn't go any higher. It actually caps out at 0 0.05. But this is where Unreal Engine is lying to you. So you can actually type in higher numbers up to 10, I believe. So we'll start, if I type a three, you'll notice exactly what's happening. And this is what it means by volumetric lighting. It's very dramatic too. Uh, the volumetric lighting is allowing the light to catch in the fog particles to generate some atmospheric qualities. And this becomes really interesting, especially when you have like a backdrop, because I could use a point light, for example, here in the background. And now it's got this 
very ethereal uh, setup. Just like with the spotlight, so now I'm, I'm taking a look at this point light, this kind of in the background. Um, I can bump up the attenuation radius on that to make it really dramatic. Um, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna slide it back even farther. And we'll have it be <laughs> like some kind of ethereal glowing doorway perhaps in the background. Um, you'll notice that this temperature that we had set on this front light is giving it this nice warm glow, but if I uncheck that, we can just leave it as white for now, which is maybe a good place to start. Um, not, I'm not too concerned about that just yet. We, we'll massage all those, the colors and everything into detail later on in the process. But that's really the basics of the lighting. And so now, you know, with a, the nice thing about a still life is you could really do it with just one light. I think though, in this case, it'll be a little bit better if we spend some time to you know, massage it into place and get the shadows in a good kind of position. I'm already thinking, you know, maybe where the camera is going to be set up here. Maybe an angle. I like the kind of low still lifes that are almost orthogonal. They're like near orthographic, or like a one point perspective. So I'm actually thinking maybe somewhere over here is where we'll have the camera eventually. So maybe I'll, what I'll do is I'm just going to pull the light back up and just kind of get it into a nice position here. I'll, I want to hide the source off camera so we don't have to worry about that. But now that this is set up, you'll notice that these shadows are kind of choppy. And actually, uh, maybe I should go ahead and just go through fixing that. So uh, to do so, you're going to want to edit the specific properties of this light even farther by going to another hidden menu, which is here under Show Advanced. This will be, you'll need to tweak this again probably after you add in uh, real assets and materials and things. But in general, uh, to, to tweak the shadow banding like this, you're going to mess with the shadow bias. You'll see that what that does as I slide the var and the shadow slope bias. So by sliding both of these all the way up, I have smoothed out the shadow banding. Um, some other things you might try will be more specific to kind of close up lights. And you may notice that these shadows still aren't perfect on these. So we can even try something called contact shadows, which in this case, um, it's not really doing what we want. So we won't mess with that maybe. And part of this is actually due to the low resolution of this default cube. So we don't need to worry about that too much. Um, that will be, all will be made clear as we add in real materials. For now, this kind of setup is fine. This light though that I have here, I also want to adjust its shadow settings. So I've selected the spotlight now and I'm going to go to show advanced. And in a similar way, I, now what I'm concerned with is this little bit here, like it's just, the shadow is not connected to the object and so it looks kind of odd where the shadow is more intense away from it than in close up. So again, I'm gonna just kind of play with the shadow bias settings and that actually did it, that pretty much fixed it up for us. So I just pulled the shadow bias of that spotlight in. So this is the, again, the movable lighting setup and what you see is what you get. So if we were to use this as our base, you know, we rendered this out, um, what we see is what we get. I'm actually noticing too that I want, since I'm gonna, I'm like thinking this is probably gonna be where the camera might be, I'm gonna start massaging the geometry around even more. This is where the movable lighting is really handy because as I move them, the shadows will just update live for me. Again, this is a little bit more processing intensive, but the trade off is that you don't have to worry about the shadows not looking like this in the end because this is exactly what they will be. So I'm just playing around with like different moments. I'm like kind of concerned thinking about these moments of uh, contrast that are popping through. So maybe I'll hide that one by just pulling that geometry in. Here I have just a little bit of this surface illuminated. So I'll maybe drag it out here so I can see this full band on that edge. And really, you know, you're just thinking compositionally around this scene. Similarly, like, you know, I have all of these little spheres. I'm just gonna hold shift and select them and all these assets here. And I, I'm just gonna like rotate this whole thing. 
so that they're f facing this camera better than I'm starting to imagine. So this is looking pretty nice. And I would actually go ahead and set up a camera here that we will deal with later. Uh, but I'm going to call it Graybox Cam 1. And I'm just going to hit Save All. And this is going to save my level and my camera and all this good stuff. Uh, but now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go over to a different level and show the baked lighting scenario and how that's different. OK, so I'm here in my second scene. I'm just going to drag a point light in. I'm not going to spend as long, perhaps, lighting this one just to demonstrate the baking process, though. And just know that the baking process, uh, you'll, you'll have to do it a few times. You'll have to do it in the gray boxing phase, and then you'll have to do it again in the um, after you've added your objects and materials. And just know that the shadow quality in your gray boxing phase probably won't be very good because of these cubes that we're using. The shadow map resolution will be rather low. So don't worry about that. That's totally fine. But you'll see that when you're not using movable lights that the lighting needs to be rebuilt. Error will be always present in your, your corner here. And you know this lighting setup isn't even that bad. Honestly, that looks kind of nice. Um, what I, all I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of my geometry on the table. I'm just going to slide it back to the side so that the shadows are all contained on the table. I'm going to move the light up a bit as well so that this shadow stays on the table as well. All right, so that looks pretty nice. I, mean, I will drag in a skylight so we can have some of the shadows illuminated on this face as well. But this is a very dramatic lighting setup. And to bake the lighting, all we do initially is you go up to where it says build at the top. You grab this pull down menu. And what you're going to want to do is if you're just testing it, you'll do a preview bake. But since this is a pretty simple scene, um, I know that this is the lighting setup I want. I'm going to go to production. And this is important because the shadows will not look as good if you bake at a lower quality. And I, I can show you exactly what I mean. So I I'll bake it first at medium quality. So I, what I did is I went to build, lighting quality, medium, and I'm going to bake it at medium. And then I'm just going to hit this button here that says build lighting only. This is in place of rendering. And again, this is the trade-off where it will save you time in the scene afterwards. But up front, it has to go through this process of pre-rendering the shadows onto the meshes. So I set it to medium quality. The scene is very small. And you'll notice uh, that it's already done. It's also the very messy shadows. And again, part of this is because uh, the shadows are being mapped onto these geometries that I've stretched out. And so uh, they are not going to look very good for us. Uh, it does give you, though, a really quick and dirty preview of what the shadowing might start to look like. So this is just the medium quality. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to swap up to production quality. And I'm going to build it again. And again, the shadows won't be perfect. But for now, that's OK. Uh, before we go on, or like before we end today, you'll see how to fix that problem. But I'm just going to hit build. This will take a little bit longer. OK. And you'll notice, boom, it has gone in. Again, the shadow quality isn't great, and that's because of some things that are a bit out of our control. But So what I'll probably do for this one is I would lower that down. And if we want these shadows to be even higher resolution, a temporary fix that we can do for this gray boxing bit here is to, in the lighting details panel, you can override the light map resolution and put it up to something like uh, 1024. And what that'll do is it'll make it so that the light map resolution is much, much higher. If we hit build, we'll build it out again. So what I've done is I've decreased the uh, potency of the lighting in the back, and then I have upped the light map resolution. And it's already taking much longer to build because the light map resolution is higher. Uh, but that's the two ways to do lighting. 
I'll go into more detail about the light baking again once we get into bringing in real assets.